All right, everybody. On in this video, we have a 2018 Ford Focus EV. Uh, so this is an electric vehicle, and the issue is is that the vehicle drove in, and after they did the repairs, the vehicle didn't want to start. Just to let you guys know, I already have this diagnosed. Okay, I was here maybe about a half an hour. But I thought I'd bring you guys through the steps that I took in order to diagnose this concern, okay? So, the first step, obviously, is that we're gonna come in, we're gonna turn the ignition on, if the ignition works, okay? I think the key is uh, pretty much, the battery on the key is pretty much dead, all right? Um, so, when I came into the vehicle, I seen a stop vehicle safely now message, this little triangle in the corner over here, indicating that there's an EV system uh, fault onto the vehicle. And from there I decide, okay, we're gonna go and we're gonna scan the system. Now, when I scan the system, I'll bring you guys back to the main screen. And then I'll bring you guys back to what is on this vehicle, okay? So we're gonna go to report. We're gonna go to diagnosis report, Ford USA, which is the one that I had. So as we can tell right here, um, I had 63 fault codes into the system, okay? So, first off, the vehicle was not uh, starting in order for the vehicle to be able to move. So, right off the start, I was like, okay, there are 63 codes in the system. Uh, maybe they disconnected something, maybe somebody else was looking at this vehicle, who knows, but that's a lot of fault codes, all right? So, I just started to go through real quick. And in the, uh, Probably not even gonna find it. I should find it. Nope, I'm not even finding it. All right, so it's not even in here, um, which is weird. It should be in here. Oh, here it is. P zero A zero A zero zero dash B. All right, that's the fault code that. I was going to be diagnosing on this car because as soon as you have an interlock code, the vehicle is not going to start, okay? Whatever interlock is off, it's the, the vehicle sees that it's off and it's not going to start, all right? So I was like, okay, so that's the code that I am going to go with. So I'm going to exit this now and we're going to go back into the system, okay? This takes a little bit of, of time on Ford. So what I'm going to do at this point is that I'm going to pause you guys and I'll bring you guys back once the auto scan actually goes through. So just remember that there was 63 codes in the system. So what I ended up doing was taking and erasing all the codes and dealing only with the code that was reoccurring. So that is the code that we're going to be diagnosing. All right. So from there, I just did an automatic scan of all the systems and I erased all the codes and then I only decided to deal with that one code. And after all those codes were erased, these were the only... DTCs that were left. So I'm gonna pause this here because the other DTCs don't really matter right now. Um, so I went into the battery, ele battery electric control module and we're gonna go to diagnose. We're gonna read trouble code and it's gonna go through its own little self test. All right. All right, so these are the codes that come up. P0A0A colon 00 and P0A0A colon 00-8B. So those are the fault codes that we're gonna be trying to diagnose if you want, okay? So from there, I went into all data. Uh, all data told me that this code has to deal with the high voltage interlock on the high voltage battery. So that is located right there. All right, behind uh, the rear seats. So I'm like, okay, that's a pretty easy one to get to. I've seen a lot harder than uh, than that. Um, there's on the old soles, you actually had to remove a cover and then remove four bolts. And then after removing those four bolts, you were able to get to the, the interlock disconnect for the high voltage battery. Um, so this is actually very easy to get to. So I was happy about that. Um, 
After that, I went and I started to look at the wiring diagram. Now on the wiring diagram, there is one side of the high voltage battery that you get um, basically a, a start signal, a start signal if you want, coming from the high voltage uh, control module all the way to that uh, interlock and then back up, all right? Interlock systems are not complicated once you understand them. Uh, it took a few vehicles for me to understand how an interlock system works and how to go about diagnosing it. So, I'm going to bring you through my steps that I use when I'm diagnosing. Always remember, whenever you're dealing with high voltage batteries or electric vehicles or hybrid electric vehicles, um, always wear the proper safety equipment, okay? I can't stress that enough. These batteries can and will kill you if something goes wrong, okay? So just make sure you follow all your state or countries or provinces um, safety regulations whenever you are dealing with high voltage batteries, okay? So the first thing that we're going to do obviously is that we're just going to take and turn off the, um, the ignition. Now from there, since we are dealing with an interlock, what we're going to do at this point is go and remove the interlock. Now I actually forgot my high voltage gloves um, at home. Because I was cleaning out my vehicle and I moved them to the side and I forgot them. So you guys are going to have to bear with me with what I have. Um, like I said, this is a risk that I'm taking. Please do not take this. This risk and do this like this yourself. Okay. So well, all I'm going to do is take and remove the connector. Ah. I'm going to try to remove the connector. Ah, give me a minute and I'll be right back. All right, so I, right now I have the connector taken out and I have the um, basically the plug for my huge uh, fuse that's inside of here. All right, so it's just connecting on that side to that side. And then over here we have our interlock. This is actually just like a dummy interlock. It's not used for anything on this vehicle. The recesses or the cavities of that interlock are actually empty, okay? So this is the interlock that we have to worry about. Now that interlock is this guy right here. So a very simple test that you can do with any multimeter is take a multimeter and just do a resistance test across the interlock, all right? Which is right here on this one. Okay, so you're just going to do a resistance test across it and you want to see anything below uh, I would say 0.3 ohms would be a good uh, number. Okay, so I'm going to try to do this with one hand and I'll explain why the resistance is so low in one second. Okay, so let's see if I can touch this. And am I touching? Yes. All right, so well that was at a 0.5 but I have a really like bad connection right now with my hands. Okay, 0.3, so 0.3 below, I'm okay with that interlock. Now, the easiest way that I can explain an interlock um, is that it's just a loop that goes all the way through. So if you were to take and just imagine a loop of wire going from this pin to this pin on the inside of here, that's all an interlock is. It's nothing more. Uh, it's just basically a, uh, a junction point. So it's going to take one signal and it's going to make sure that it passes through the to the other side to get to whatever module needs to go to. That's all an interlock circuit is. So, armed with that knowledge, okay, uh, I decided, you want to know what? We're going to take and grab our little scope here. Since it's just going to be a small amount of voltage. Like I said, please always use the proper, the proper protective equipment when dealing or going anywhere close to this. Don't follow what I'm doing right now. I forgot my gloves at home, but I still want to make this video. Okay, so what we're gonna do is take a, a probe and we're just gonna go on the inside. Okay, and I want you guys to watch. All right, so there is actually a bias voltage on that line, which is good. So that tells me that that's the one that's coming from a module. Okay, what the bias voltage is supposed to be, no idea. Um, four doesn't even tell you in their system, so. And when I go on to the other plug, or the other hole, nothing's there. So what we're gonna do is just take and go inside of that. I'm gonna move him up. And what we're gonna do at that point is go to the front of the car and just push the on button. Why? Because I wanna see if there is a signal that is reaching here 
which there should be since we do have a bias voltage onto the line. All right. So all we're going to do is watch as I push the start button. And as you can see right there, we have voltage that went up. All right. Now this is at 2.5 volts per division. So if I take and I change this and we'll go a little bit more. All right. We basically have battery voltage on there. Okay, but it's not going to really be battery voltage. I can actually bring that with my test light and drop that down to ground and bring it back up uh, to 12 volts. All right, so what does that tell me? That means that my module is able to send out its signal on that line. Okay, so is there a way for me to test my interlock circuit to make sure that it's reaching back to the module? Of course there is. Let's turn this guy off. We're going to see it drops right back down. Okay, from there, I decided, let's jump it. Okay, so we're just gonna put one more little prong on the inside. These prongs are smaller than the, the cavities and the pins that are inside there, all right? Or those probes, I should say. So, at that point, I'm like, all right. Now, I want you guys to pay attention when I push the start button now. I'm gonna try to get you guys as close as I can. Listen. You hear the big contactors and everything click on the inside of that now, okay? Which we did not have a while ago. So I'm going to turn off the key. You hear it turn off. I'll do it again. All right, so the contactors go on and off. That's good. So, next step on that was, okay, I heard my contactors go on. Um, are these codes still present in the system? Let's go. Clear trouble codes. Read trouble codes. What trouble codes do I have in my system now? That was my next question. Okay, as you notice, we still have that little red triangle. Ah, look at this. We have a P0ABB and a P0ABB0B. So we have a hybrid EV battery pack A voltage sense circuit range performance. Now, why would we have that? Because we have our huge fuse, our 350 amp fuse that is actually out. So the when the contactor clicks and it's supposed to send the ground voltage first to make sure that the system is okay, and then after that, it takes and it contacts the positive side contactor in order to basically send pow the power, the high voltage power and ground to all the high voltage power and ground, uh, to all the high voltage components that use the high voltage. All right. So, since the codes for the interlock are gone, that means that the wiring from my interlock is good. And that means that my, there's an issue with my interlock at the switch. So I'm like, but how can that be? I think my battery's gone dead. Yeah. Okay. But how can that be? That doesn't make any sense, right? Actually, it does. And I w it took me about 15 minutes to <laughs> like figure this out. But you want to know what? It's a learning curve, all right? So I want you guys to take a look at the way that this connector is. I don't know if you guys see that. But that does not look right to me. And this is the way that it was when I came to the vehicle. So I was like, okay, there's something that's not right there. So I was like, you want to what? Let's see if I can move this white part back anymore. Ugh. Oh, here. Okay. Let's see. Oh, look at that. Look how far I moved that back. Let's remove this. Remove this. Probably going to have to go get a booster pack. All right. And we're also going to take and look at how close this guy is onto this now. Okay? Look at that. There's almost no gap in between. All right. So let's go back over and let's turn the car on. Let's see what happens. If the car starts. Nah, I think my 12 volt battery is too dead. Let me go grab a jump pack and I'll be right back, guys. Okay?
All right, so haven't touched the scan tool. Same codes onto it. Haven't started the car. Let's take and make sure that everything is working properly. All right. Let's make sure it starts now. Now let's see. I'm gonna try start the vehicle again. All right. So so far so good. It says the vehicle is on now, which means it's in ready mode. Okay. And we're just gonna keep it going. We have no. little triangle popping up anymore. All right, so the issue with this one was, and there's your little ready sign too, if, in case you guys are wondering, okay? It says the vehicle is on and your ready signal's over here. Okay, so the issue with this one was that the interlock was not completely in its open position. Not, uh, sorry, not the interlock, but your surface disconnect plug Connector, lever, lever was not in its proper position and it was causing the interlock fault. So, um, pretty interesting. I found it pretty interesting anyway. But, you wanna know what? I was on this car roughly about a half an hour with you guys uh, going through this video, about another 10 minutes, about 40 minutes total. And the vehicle is fixed and it's gonna get on its way. So it's very important to learn EV and HEV systems. Why? Because they are out there and they are on the road and they are going to end up hitting into the shops eventually. Now, the, for all the techs that work at the dealers, they've already seen these. Um, I remember I was at Kia and HEV vehicles was in 2010 that I got sent to Ontario in order to go take the HEV course for the Optima Hybrid when it first came out. So since 2010 to now is when I was, since I've been working on EV vehicles, all right? Uh, Kia was at the forefront of uh, hybrid vehicles. Now, they're, they're still in the, in the polls for and running really, really strong, but there are other companies out there now also. So since 2004, uh, 2010, sorry, I was working on uh, hybrid electric vehicles. So, and it's not really till after I left the dealer that I really started to learn how to diagnose them properly because when you're working at a dealer some dealer some manufacturers give you plenty of information while others do not uh, Kia was more on the lines of try this try known good part does it work no contact uh, our tech line and from there tech line would take over and tell us to replace a multitude of parts until the car was fixed and when that didn't work well then the car got shipped back to Kia Canada and Kia Canada's technicians would take care of it from there so they really didn't want us doing anything onto the vehicles um, they just wanted us to be part changers at the end so this could go for clients also don't always blame the technician when they're working at a dealership okay the training that the technician gets at a dealership will depend on that dealership and it will also depend on the manufacturer okay and it also depends on the technician because if you have a technician that just wants to go and do brakes and suspension all day then he's not going to be uh the type of guy that's going to be able to diagnose an issue like this okay he's uh, the guy that's going to do brakes and suspension all day and i find that there's a lack of wanting to advance in this field today. Well, it's in my area, I find that there's a lack of wanting to advance in this field. Everybody wants the big pay, but nobody wants to actually do the grunt work in order to get that big pay. So that's just my thoughts on that. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And as always, I will see you guys next time.